Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me as we sit down and have uh, an important conversation and a challenging one. What role do we play? You, you are all leaders here in this community and the religious bodies. Um, what role do we play? Personally, I would say that our greatest example, you know, as a Christian is, is Jesus Christ. He stepped out of eternity into time clothes his divinity and our humanity. He came in our circumstance. And I think that uh, the church uh, has to be not just visible and not just in the community, but for the community. Uh, in addition to providing a space for prayer, faith, mosque, uh, temples, church communities should be providing spaces, opportunities, and programs that allow its members to adhere to these tenets of his faith. So like, uh, like the Bible says, love thy neighbor as thyself, right? And that correlates to the Islamic tradition rather that says, None of you truly believe until you love for your brother that which you love for yourself. How is your faith community, your church, your mosque, temple, how are they embodying that? The, the primary role of the church, uh, of the people of God, is to witness to a God who cares for those who are disenfranchised and marginalized. That's true from Genesis all the way through. Um, and so I, I see it as the primary role. You're, we're neighbors. Yeah, you know, in our Bible, the first question that God asks is ayeka, which means, where are you? He asks that to Adam, where are you? And that's a question that echoes throughout the Bible. Mm. And the answer to that question is supposed to be hineni, I'm here, here I am, hineni. And when you answer that question, you have to know where you are, and you have to know where you stand. Passover is a holiday where we think about where we came from, we were slaves. And then we come out of slavery and God liberates us from slavery. And with that liberty comes responsibility. With that freedom comes the responsibility to love and care for those who are enslaved now. In, in our embodied experience, we live our faith in our bodies. I'm also living on the west side of Chicago. I'm living in that space as I'm reading, reflecting, and teaching uh, what it means to be a person of faith in a world that uh, needs us to show up in our bodies. Is this religious community doing enough when it comes to intervening in the violence in our city? I, I don't know who has the authority to set the notches on the measuring stick mm. as far as what is enough. Um, in my opinion, I would probably lean towards no, that the faith community is not doing enough. However, the number one role of the shepherd is to feed the sheep. If I'm supposed to be uh, praying, fasting, studying the word so that I properly handle God's word, I may not be able to spend 10, 15 hours on the picket lines with you, but that doesn't mean I can't send resources. It doesn't mean that I can't pray. It doesn't mean that I can't bring lunch by. And so I think it's a, it's a focus of priority is a lot of time. I think an issue that I struggle with is sometimes in faith communities we can close ourselves off and pretend that the problems happen outside our community. Mm. You know, whether it's gun violence or mental illness or addiction, whatever it is, we like to sometimes pretend in here everything's safe and good and fine and out there is where the bad stuff happens. And A, it's not true. These issues affect all of our communities, so we don't, you know, I don't like to think about issues out there and issues in here. I think, you know, in every community you have every issue. You know, it may not be, people may be hiding it below the surface, but it's there. Violence in Chicago is a synagogue issue. It's a Jewish issue. Immigration and our broken immigration system is not a political or social issue to me. It is a pastoral responsibility because it's in my life, it's in my block, it's in my church, it's in my family. So therefore, I, I'm not being brave. I, I don't know if people think I'm being brave or courageous. I'm just doing what I know I need to do. If you can't uh, overextend yourself or your capacity, then I, I wanna see more support. More and more people are leaving the church or you know, leaving religion altogether. In your opinion, are people losing faith? Why is that and how do we get that back? I feel like people are losing touch, mm. right? I feel like people are losing touch, and when you lose touch, you can lose faith, you can lose yourself. We have to um, make sure that faith leaders are able to also guide uh, uh, our communities through all the different changes that we're having uh, in society. And I think when those things are not addressed, then people feel that their needs aren't met. And when their needs aren't met, they go elsewhere. I agree that unfortunately religious, across the religions, religious bodies have done a lot of harm and that has turned a lot of people off. But I think we can't forget that we have really uh, important things to offer 
that are so needed in the climate today, uh, all the civic structures that kept America strong and people connected to one another, most of them have broken down. And I think religion is one of those few still vibrant spaces where people across difference, my synagogue, thank God we have people across the entire spectrum coming together each and every Saturday, praying together, socializing together. And I think about what other spaces are, in, are there in America where people are doing that? It does have to do with how we approach faith as either an individualistic endeavor or a communal endeavor, um, as you said. So I think those of us that see the centrality of a faith community as survival for survival and thriving, then we're gonna do it that way because we know because of our either our status of how we came into this country or where we stand socioeconomically that our livelihood is connected to the community that surrounds us. I think our main responsibility uh, as people in the faith-based community is to be leaders in the community to model what we say we believe so that it catches on to other people around us. You know what I'm saying? Because it has to move from the head to the heart. I say all the time, if you have a steak on a plate, you can put the salt within a half of a centimeter of the steak and it does no good whatsoever. It has to touch. And so if we want to make a change in our community, um, it, it, we have to touch, we have to touch. Most denominations in the Christian faith that are planting churches and that are growing are growing in urban settings, in communities of color with immigrants and so, and in immigrant churches. And so I think where I'm located, I'm always like, oh yeah, the church, you know, faith communities are shrinking, okay. People are leaving, okay. Um, but our, our church is not going through that. There's a generational shift because I'm, I'm from all of my colleagues and all the different faith communities, I do hear of these generational shifts. And I think that like the Quran, one of the things it teaches is that there was not, there was never a messenger that didn't come, that didn't speak the language of the people. And I think, uh, I see a lot of success in, in mosque and masjid that where the leadership speaks the language, speaks that is able to uh, speak to the issues uh, that people are dealing with on an everyday basis. Faith communities sustain hope for future generations mm -hmm. and it's our responsibility as leaders in those communities to not only yell at people who aren't coming into our faith traditions, but um, to, to really compel them, as the scripture says, compel them to come in.